Welcome to the Lilithverse. I am Luciana Hartwin, your narrator and guide. Here at the Lilithverse, we've had a number of requests to discuss the topic of Lilith and Succubi. So we're going to do a light exploration of that topic and check back in for a deep dive in a few weeks. They have haunted our dreams and nightmares for centuries. Figures of both beauty and terror, desire and danger. Lilith and Succubi, their names whispered in hushed tones, their legends passed down through generations. But who are these enigmatic figures, and why do they continue to captivate us. Lilith, the rebellious queen. Lilith, the first wife of Adam, refused to be submissive. Cast out of Eden for her defiance, she became a symbol of female rebellion, a voice for those who dared to challenge the status quo. Her portrayal has evolved over time, reflecting changing societal views on women and power. Once demonized as a monster, she is now reclaimed by some as a feminist icon, a reminder that women deserve respect and equality. Succubi, Masters of Dreams Succubi, the demons of dreams, prey on men's deepest desires. With their alluring forms and hypnotic whispers, they drain their victim's energy, leaving them exhausted and bewildered. These seductive fiends have long been a source of fascination and fear. They represent the dark side of desire, the consequences of unchecked lust, and the vulnerability of men to their own primal urges. Lilith emerged from the shadows millennia ago, first cast as a demon. In some legends, she is portrayed as the stealer of children. She is portrayed as the causer of miscarriages. She is also portrayed as a succubus in the earliest legends found in Sumeria and Mesopotamia. Some of our first references to Lily II involve the talismans that the people of ancient Sumeria and Mesopotamia would create to protect themselves from Lily II, the owl demon, the succubus, the taker of children, the destroyer of pregnancies. And of course, we have more recent evolutions of Lilith, Lilith as first wife to Adam. Lilith wears many faces. She assumes many guises, and she may appear to you in one or many of those guises. But does that mean that Lilith is merely a succubus? Both Lilith and succubi share certain traits. They are both powerful female figures who challenge male dominance and societal expectations. They both wield their sexuality as a weapon, captivating and manipulating men through their undeniable allure. As succubus, Lilith might very well appear to you in that guise, but that does not mean that is all she is. There are key distinctions. Lilith demands respect and partnership, while succubi are often driven by their own desires, be it power, revenge, or simply the thrill of the chase. Lilith's story is one of rebellion and defiance. While succubi embody the darker aspects of temptation and the consequences of succumbing to one's baser instincts. Evolving Portrayals Reflections of Our Times The portrayals of Lilith and succubi continue to evolve in the modern world, reflecting our changing anxieties and perspectives on sex, gender, and power. 
In some contexts, they are seen as cautionary tales, warning against the dangers of unchecked desire and female autonomy. In others, they are embraced as symbols of liberation and empowerment, reclaiming their sexuality and defying societal constraints. Lilith and Succubi may be shrouded in myth and legend, but their allure and enigma endure. They challenge us to confront our own fears and desires, to question societal norms, and to recognize the power and complexity of the feminine. Whether they inspire fear, fascination, or even a newfound appreciation for their defiance, these enduring figures continue to captivate us, reminding us that the line between beauty and terror between empowerment and manipulation, is often as thin as a whispered dream. Here in the Lilith verse, we do not gatekeep. Your relationship with Lilith may look nothing like my relationship with Lilith. She came to me and helped me in the guise that I needed. She may come to you in a completely different guise, in a completely different manner. The beauty of Lilith is how versatile and multifaceted she is, she was. She is many things. She is a dark goddess. She is a figure of female empowerment. She is a goddess of rebellion. What you need from her, what your relationship looks like, that is entirely between you and Lilith. What is your takeaway? What do you think of Lilith and Succubi? Do they represent the dangers of female power or the potential for liberation? Share your thoughts in the comments below, and let's continue the conversation. In the near future, we'll be doing a deep dive into the earliest days of Lilith, when she emerged in ancient Sumeria and ancient Mesopotamia as a dark owl demon who haunted the dreams of men and led them astray and into temptation. That is all for now. This has been Luciana Hartwin, your narrator and guide. Thank you for joining me here in the Lilith verse, and I hope to see you back here again very, very soon.